Hi, this is Glenda. Uh, this is mostly another video for our Paper Mates group. Um, I was asked to choose the topic again, so I've chosen the bokeh technique. Um, for those who are familiar, you've probably seen more videos than you want to on this technique, and then there are others who have never heard of it. Um, so I'm hoping half our group's never heard of it, and we'll keep it interesting as something new. Um, the term is a photographic one that um, the photographer gave to this technique of blurring out part of the photo. Um, so I mean this one's extreme where it's got everything blurred out, the lights of a city, um, and then a lot of them have something in the front that's in focus. So in this case they've added a sheep to background, I don't think it's an actual photo. This one you can just see the sharp car. I love this with the leaves, That that is so card making suited. This one has a blossom here. Um, this one again is completely blurred out. I think this was a created pattern, probably a Photoshop rather than a photo. Uh, and to show you that it doesn't have to be circles, it can be stars, hearts, whatever you like, you're just getting a shape out there. So card makers have adopted this as an idea for card making backgrounds. So that's what we're going to be doing. So. Um, most of the time you start with a coloured background um, and add white circles. So these are all done that way um, and these ones are all essentially the same technique but obviously you can get completely different styles. Um, so they were all done with a sponging and inked background. Um, so somehow you just have to get your colour on the background for these ones. So other ways of getting your colour on would be um, this one I used watercolour and just splodged some watercolour on the background. Uh, for this one um, I used distress inks and then I actually threw the droplets. Why is this strobing? Stop strobing. Sorry, I've no idea why my camera does that sometimes. Normally if I move it away, it's okay. Um, threw the water droplets on it, uh, you know, Tim Holtz style, and blotted them off fairly quickly and then added my white circles. So you can go for a sort of a clean and simple and still use this technique. Um, actually, this one that I showed was not um, sponged, that was using sprays. So, you know, Lindy sprays, um, tattered, uh, not tattered angels, um, oh, anyway, any of the sprays. Some of them were homemade and some of them were daubers and just get colour on there somehow. Uh, but equally, you don't have to um, colour the background. This one, I did white circles on just a black cardstock. Uh, this one is just coloured circles doesn't like the white. Coloured circles on the um, white cardstock, different shades of it, but it's the same technique as the sponging. Uh, and this one again, except instead of sponging them, they're just a dauber, um, you know, this sort of thing. So the next thing would be you've got to get your circles on. Um, if you're going to sponge, if you've got any sort of template, uh, I've been using this one. Um, you just want something with circles. A lot of people are taking a sheet of acetate and putting some circles in it, um, which is obviously a nice, easy, cheap way to do it. I, I quite like this one. Just picked it up at Kmart or somewhere like that. Um, and then uh, another way. Um, these ones are simply daubed on um, with the, if you can get hold of these little sponge daubers then you can get different size circles. So I think I used these and probably uh, this other one as well for that one. I did that one a little while ago. Um, so you know you just have to get your circles on. And I've shown this one a few times where I used the Stampin' Up! tree and just stamp the leaves as white dots. 
So all different ways that you could achieve the effect. Um, so I'll quickly do a demo just because I can. Um, so you can use, if you're going to sponge your background, you can use any spongeable ink. I've got some distress ink, but I believe the Stampin' Up! ink, ink sponge well and probably some of the other dye inks. Try any ink you've got and just see what works. If you don't have any inks, you could use just water-based markers like the kids have and um, put some down on a, a, a plastic sheet of some sort and just put your paper in it. You, you don't have to spend money to do this technique. get down the colour anywhere we can. And then because this is distress, I'm just going to spritz it because I like the way it blends together when you do so. this. Okay, so I've mentioned before I have had a lot of trouble ever getting a nice white ink that I like. So what I do is um, put the uh, white gouache watercolour paint. I just put some on a little um, foam that's the cut and dry foam, so the Ranger product anyway. Um, I just put some on that and spritz it with water and I find that makes a really good stamp, um, white stamp. If you don't have that, um, any, I don't know if acrylic would work, I haven't tried it, but I'm just going to put some on my acrylic block, so equally a bit of plastic, whatever you've got spritz it with water and take my template and my little sponge daub. You can see it's using the stencils is quite hard on the sponge daubers. They're disintegrating quite quickly. Um, but they're not particularly expensive. So you just randomly colour in your spots. If you want them a bit darker, don't dilute the paint as much. Rather than get out more paint, I'll just keep using my little ink pad. Where's my water gone? Um, when you sponge, you'll get a nice soft look, is what I've been finding. Um, but what I like to do when I've done, you know, some of this, is to just take the round dauber and add some extra dots and. They have a different look to them, so they have a much more textured look, and probably even more so because this daub is now getting a bit sad. So just add some extra dots, and my daughter gave me these, but I think you can just get them at the $2 shops, and just add some different sizes with these ones. And they are smoother because they're not so worn. Some little tiny ones. And then you do want to make sure it's dry after this step.
Okay, now to do the front image, um, some of them I have stamped, some of them have, I've, I've added die cuts. Um, you can add anything you like, or well, I wouldn't say nothing at all because this is definitely a background. Um, what I have found is that because I'm stamping on paint, it's not giving um, a spectacular result. So what I've been doing is using black embossing powder over it and that seems to make the world right. So I'm just going to stamp my image. one's not too bad but I still would like it a bit darker so I'm going to emboss it getting myself in a mess here Okay, so then it just gets trimmed down and turned into a card. So that's my take on the bokeh technique. Um, as I say, there's all different styles you can do. Um, you know, it's going to hopefully suit everybody in some way, um, and you should all, everybody should be able to do it with tools that they already have. Um, and you know, it's quite a fun look, something a bit different. Well, I suppose it's not. It's been popular for a while now, but anyway, it's a technique and that's what we're doing. So, if you watched this right to the end, thank you very much for watching. Bye.